exhortation this morning is, so what is the Advent season? You know, so many times we have little ones sitting out there and we get used to seeing the Advent candle and we go through it each year, but do we remember what the Advent season is, where it came from, and what the symbolism is for it? So I thought it would be a perfect time to go through that with all of us today. So you always start by looking up the definition. And Advent, the word is a noun. And Advent is derived from the Latin words adventus, meaning coming, which is a translation of the Greek word perusia. Advent is a time of heavy anticipation focused on awaiting a big occurrence. Now, as I looked at the dictionary definitions a little further, it had the period beginning four Sundays prior to Christmas and observed by some Christians as a season of prayer and fasting. And then it said the coming of Christ at the incarnation. incarnation. Christian theology, it's the embodiment of God the Son in the human form as flesh as Jesus Christ. And it says be the second coming. And then thirdly, it goes on to when it's not capitalized in other definitions. It also shares synonyms, appearance, arrival, coming. It's all in anticipation of the coming of Jesus' birth and his arrival. But when I looked at parousia, it's a noun, an etymology is to be present. In Christian theology, the time when Jesus Christ will return to judge humanity at the end of the world. Now, I never, I don't know, it's been a while, um, but I never really thought about it in all, there are three aspects. Advent, also, there's the Advent when we look at as Christians, of where when we as believers accept Christ into our hearts, and that is the coming in of the Spirit within our hearts. So there are three ways that we celebrate that Advent. Most think of Advent today as a time of anticipation and expectation of the birth of Christ, and yet Advent began as early as the 4th and 5th centuries as a time of fasting and prayer for new Christians. The first mention of Advent occurred in 300 AD at a meeting of churches called Saragossa. It then eventually graduated or developed into the season that stretched across most of the month of December, such as we have celebrated here at Grace Church for years. We celebrate the four Sundays prior, and we actually light the white Christ candle in the center on either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. The Advent wreath first appeared in Germany in 1839 when a Lutheran minister working in a children's ministry made a wreath out of an old wagon wheel, and he had put red candles all around it, 20 red candles, and then in the center, he had four white lodger candles. And they would light one of the red candles each of the weekdays, and the white one on Sunday, and move on from there until they were all lit. Eventually, the Advent wreath was made much like the one that we have here. We see that we have evergreens. And first of all, we notice that the wreath is in a circle, the circle of life, representing Evergreen symbolizing everlasting life in the midst of winter and death. We all know it. We see it in the area that we live in, that our evergreens, you know, everything else goes off those trees in the fall, and it dies, but the evergreen goes on, and it continues to stay green. The circle also reminds us of God's unending love and the reminder of everlasting life. I remember that we had pine cones on ours. I don't know if you can see them in the back. Um, and not everybody makes the wreath the same, but we have pine cones there that symbolize new life that Jesus brings through his resurrection. A new candle is lit on each of the four Sundays before Christmas, although traditions do vary. Here at Grace, we have the first, second, and fourth candle being lit on those weeks, but they're all in purple. And the third is rose color. Not all wreaths add the fifth candle, which is the Christ candle, usually placed in the middle being lit on Christmas Day. 
The first candle symbolizes hope, and we heard that already this morning. It's called the prophet's candle. The prophets of the Old Testament, especially Isaiah, waited in hope for the Messiah's arrival. The purple candle symbolizing royalty, repentance, and fasting. The second candle represents faith, and we will hear that next week. And that is called Bethlehem's candle. Micah had foretold that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, which is also the birthplace of King David. And in this case, the purple candle symbolizes preparation for the coming king. Start to get excited already, don't we? The third candle symbolizes joy, and is called the shepherd's candle. Due to the great joy of shepherds, as the angels announced that Jesus came for humble and even people that others felt as unimportant as them. And this pink candle represents joyfulness and rejoicing. And the fourth candle represents peace. And it's called the angel's candle. As the angels announced that Jesus came to bring peace, he came to bring people close to God, but he also came to bring people closer to each other. Again. And in this case, the purple represents the culmination of love through the Messiah. The fifth candle, often optional is what they have there, but I can't imagine not having the Christ candle in the center. It brought tears to my eyes to think that you wouldn't do that. But that is lit on Christmas Day, or Christmas Eve, if, if you're not holding that service. But that is the Christ candle, representing pure light and victory in Jesus' birth coming on the Christmas Day. Now this is a busy time of year for all of us, and I. I chose to, to um, do my exhortation on this for the reasons I mentioned earlier, just to get us all to get our minds in the right place and to remember and to see all the symbolism that is in this wreath itself and the process that we go through each Sunday before Sundays before Christmas Day. It's important that we prepare for that Christmas Day and the reminder of the birth of Jesus Christ as he came to earth to live as God man and to fulfill prophecy that we may have everlasting life. I encourage each of you to listen and to reflect on the spiritual significance each week as we have different members of our congregation come up and share the thing for that week, that we may take that with us, put it upon our hearts, live it, and wait in anticipation with joyful hearts. Let's work to receive the spirit of the season through serious reflection and that joy as we observe these traditional Advent customs. I also ask that you reflect on the Advent message shared each Sunday. Go home, we reread the verses that were shared with you or make a note of them on the pastor's notes so that we keep it fresh during that week. Reflect upon what that message was and to do the same with the pastor's sermon that is shared each week through this Advent season. That we pay attention to each word of it, that we reflect upon it in anticipation, and that we just really search for the Lord in quiet times throughout the week and not just on Sunday, and not when we're just here. And also, I ask that you think about the words of each song that is sung, whether by the choir, or as a congregation, being sure to reflect on them throughout the week. It was neat in preparation as I read, you know, I don't know how many times, and I know the song, A Little Town of Bethlehem. And it was just a wonderful reminder. Your two first stanzas talk about that Christmas morning and the baby Jesus. But the second two start to talk about Christ coming into our hearts. And so, for that, I ask you to remember and to go out and remember to make sure that as busy as we get with other preparations for the holiday and spending time with people, make sure we're spending that time enjoying this and truly reflecting on it, that we spend that heartfelt time and our example to others in Christ. Thank you.